episode two, season one of the Cryptic Consortium with Nick, myself, and Gary. Sorry, episode one, season one. Episode two, season one. Sorry. That's it. <laughs> we got we got to talking, and I got a little thrown off. But uh, Nick, you want to tell them what tonight's all about? Oh yeah, tonight's going to be a good one, and it's and it's especially dear and near to our other co-host Gary because it's about the Mongolian death worm. And don't worry, folks. Uh, Mongolia is pretty far away from here, so we don't have any of those death worms. And uh, they kind of like to live under the sand. So we'll be getting deep, deep, deep into that, no pun intended, uh, today in this show. <laughs> listen to this word with. And uh, so, uh, Gary, why don't you tell them why it's so near and dear to you? Well, I happen to be a first-generation Mongolian. You know, my mother was uh, first-generation back, so I guess I'd be second-generation. But So I'm half Mongolian, got a lot of family over there, and we've traced our lineage to that area. So it's it's uh, this is actually kind of cool to me. Uh, I've never been in the Gobi Desert, but I've been in a lot of desert, and we'll get into that when we get into the biological side of it. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> So I'll tell you what, let's throw a map up first yeah. of that area of the world. And I just want to uh, explain to people where it is. Uh, the Mongolian death worm is in the Gobi Desert. And as the first part of his name says, Mongolia. And we're going to have a map thrown up there any second now. Or five seconds, two, one. Dang. There we go. Okay. Did you not do that right. All right. Great, great All, right. Time, All right. All right. It still looks a little blurry, but here we go. Right in the middle. If you can put that arrow over there, right in the middle is Mongolia. Now, if you're going to notice, straight down is China. So to the south of Mongolia is China. To the north of Mongolia is Russia. And you'll you'll see it's it's surrounded by mostly Russia, you know, and uh what what did you guys tell me before that the uh, the Chinese now actually uh, control that area uh, for yeah, nuclear uh, testing? China, has, Gary was saying, China has expanded their borders dramatically. I mean, they're actually they, they control Tibet now. They oh. the only the only Himalayan country that they haven't been able to get hold of yet is Nepal, but uh, they've expanded into Mongolia. They've over the past uh, thirty years they've ex they've taken like a quarter of the country of Mongolia, just pushing it out. So it's been hard for Western Western technology, Western for researchers anybody. to get in that country. Yes. That's yeah, because why. China is locked down, as we all know. Yeah. And if you'll notice on the lower left, I'd say the seven o'clock on that map is India. And then just yep. come up a little bit is Pakistan. And there's Kurdistan. Kurdistan. And, uh, you know, all the other former Russian, you know, countries that belong to them. But uh, I'm surprised Russia hasn't tried to make a push on that, not let China have a, a border so close. However, yeah. we're talking about the Gobi Desert. Gobi Desert is, is just full of sand. And uh, that is the playground of the Mongolian death worm. Uh, the Mongolian death worm basically lives under the sand. And uh, what it, it's also carnivorous. All right, it's very carnivorous, and that's something I want people to understand because as we go along here, as you can see, there's the guy on the ground, and there's a smaller death worm popping up, and his camel is saying later, that camel is just bugging out. He says, you can eat the human, but you ain't going to eat me. Uh, you know, and to tell you, the first time publicly word of the Mongolian death worm came out was in 1926. However, uh, there was a, uh, an author that wrote about the Mongolian death worm in a book. I mean, he didn't come publicly out with it. He just wrote a book back in 1922. That's the first time that we have it written about. However, it's been spoken about in lore. And, and you know, there he is. At least that's that one, was, one picture of him. And if he opens, his, yeah, and if he opens his mouth up a little wider, You'll see that it has teeth that go all around yeah. the uh, the opening over there, and generally it is red. It has been reported 
all the all the research I've done, they've come out red. Yeah, red. So for some odd reason, yeah, blood red, just just like that, people. Yeah. Now, the thing about the Mongolian deathworm you're going to notice is he has no eyes. However, you know they are blind. However, they're very very sensitive to any vibration, the slightest vibration. And being carnivorous like they are, they come up and they sniff around when they come up they uh and and they look around to see what's out there and basically what's out there are donkeys or or horses uh camels humans and it will eat a human uh that's, some that's of the reports too, Nick. yeah human, humans and livestock now now what did you now i got we got two different things about length about length, uh, I got two to seven feet. You got a, quite a considerable amount I, more than that. Yeah, I've I've got some reports here that was reported to the Mongolian prime minister back in okay. the early 1920s, and I mean early 1920s, uh, 50 feet to 300 feet, up to wow. 25,000 pounds is the cool. estimation. Now that those two of those reports came from the uh, Mongolian military people. Okay, and that, that's really where I'm good. drawing that from. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to, well, let's, I'm going to get into some of the stories later, but Gary, mm -hmm. what do you got on it? I mean, y'all covered, you know, uh, quite a bit of it. The, there's not a lot of folklore of East of Western, uh, how would we say affiliation because of, like y'all said, the, uh, uh, political and geopolitical situation over there. Yeah. Uh, Pretty nicely. With me being Mongolian and also being Buddhist, I'm also Tao Buddhist, which is that area of, you know, the Mongolian and Chinese, the upper Chinese, northern Chinese people were mostly Taoist. But uh, it's funny that, you know, this being in folklore, but yet not being in folklore, is, is they speak of this worm in our teachings in some of, yeah. the, of that area. Some of the Mongolian priests would come from that area, you know, down in India, which were ours was based and uh, talk about that and so they acknowledge it so just saying that there's didn't, didn't they used to it. say that if you're bad the mongolian death worm yeah. will come out from underneath your bed or your yeah. closet and eat that, you you know that's i was we, i was gonna wait a little bit to get into that but the folklore <laughs> side of it has has such a great influence on a lot of these interpretations and stories and stuff mm. but the uh you know, my first thoughts of with the Mongolian death worm is a, you know, a cheap porno flick, but it didn't. Make that yeah, <laughs> but definitely. Uh, <laughs> you you kind of th threw me off with that second set of measurements because all the research that I got into on the more, how would we say, mainstream, yeah, logical side of things, they were saying two to seven foot. Uh, right. Being right. so big like that, that's and there's nothing but here. The biggest thing is there's nothing biologically. I'm going to show y'all that they could be false identifying this with something else biologically. Yeah. There's well, the, the reason I mentioned there. that the 50 to 300 feet length yeah. and the up to up to now it's 2000 to 2000 to 25,000 pounds. The reason I mentioned that is because recently I got a computer app that allows me to go into newspapers all over the world. And uh, I think we actually spoke about that a little bit last week, Gary. I think you mentioned about the microfilm and a microfiche. Yes, yes where you can go in and. Yeah, well, 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 a lot of these places have that. And I was able to actually go into some reports that were given by military men uh, way back when. And it was written in the paper. And there's 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 a one of those uh, pictures. I guess they all stood for a picture. And you see a bunch of troops, and this thing must be at least about 30 feet long. Wow. That's crazy. You know? Yeah. And what they did was they, they splashed gasoline on it, and they killed it. You sure now, that mixed up with the movie Tremors? Yes, that's what it, part of well, the research I did was that it influenced the movie. Well, this isn't Legend in color. This, this picture is not in color. It's a black and white picture, and these guys are in the old... I researched it. They're in the old military uniforms like they used to have. Yeah. yeah. Now, free. something I wanted to ask you, though, Gary, is um, Genghis Khan, wasn't he a Mongolian? Yes, yeah. he was. All right, because that's where and I'm I, getting... They actually talk about it, too. Yeah. And Kubla, Kubla Khan. That's, yeah. Kubla Khan. Yeah, yeah that, that's Kubla right. Was, was, yep. was yep. 
Genghis's son. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I so mean, that's what I was saying. There's enough reports that we have, you know, there is a, 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 a legitimacy. Is that the word I'm looking for? You know, to yes. the subject matter. But one thing I wanted to bring up where he was talking that second set of measurements, there is nothing in the air on the planet that would match that description biologically. Right. Well, so well, you have the anacondas of the Amazon. That burrow under the ground, though. No, no, this doesn't burrow under the ground, no. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? But, but, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing, too, that, uh, you know, I can understand if they was talking about, like me and Jeremiah, with a two and a seven feet long, you could make, you know, a snake or anything yeah. do that. But something of that size, there is no mistake in what it is. Mm -mm. Right. Then you look into the credibility of the guy, and he was a politician. <laughs> what didn't they say he was the government governor or something like that? Well, uh, I've got some newspaper reports here. I'll, I guess I might as well throw it out now. The Mongolian prime minister, his name was Damdin Bazar, Damdin Bazar, in 1922. Uh, here's here's one. Uh, a report was related to him by one of his citizens. Uh, he and his, this gentleman and his family in Mongolia, they survived an attack by a death worm. They're oh. saying, they're saying that the, that the worm was about four feet in circumference and about 25 feet long. Um, all right. Okay. And what happened was the worm came out of the ground and they already knew about the lore from their, from this gentleman's grandparents. They, they all ran. They had one horse that they were traveling with. They were not riding the horse. The horse was a pack horse. And uh, this is not a Mongolian death worm. But anyway, uh, the pack horse was unfortunate to have been grabbed by the death worm and dragged into a hole uh, under the sand, and it disappeared. The family members were able to escape. Now, see, like I said, that was reported to the Mongolian prime minister, Damdin Bazar, in 22. That's so pretty that's crazy. One. It seems, seems big enough to grab a full-grown horse and yank it into the ground. That's pretty disturbing. That, yeah, it is disturbing. That's the reason why I wanted the folks to see in the beginning of the show where the map was and that we yeah. don't have anything like that over here in the United States, at least not that I know of anyway. Right. But what about those in Arizona? I'm trying what? to... Those, those, Man, those gummy stumps. Y'all's head, tremors. <laughs> oh, it's the movie. I was going to ask you the, the movie snakes. Uh, tremors, yeah, yeah. Well, it, how they got there in Arizona, from what I understand, is people transported these small snakes over to a museum there, and they got loose in Arizona, and then they grew. So there you go. Now, what do you guys have on the what they spit spit the venom? It's corrosive, correct? Yeah, well, it's a poisonous venom is, is what I, I came up with here. Right. But I, I don't know. It doesn't look like they really need it to kill things because they just pop up under the sand right underneath you and uh and grab you. Yeah, and yeah. and if they're and if they're that kind of size, four inch four feet in circumference, twenty-five feet plus long, they're just gonna crush you. You're not gonna get away. But according to this, they 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 spray venom. Yep. Now, Jay, venom. Jay, about about how to kill them. Yeah. What did you find? You well, got... I found you were the one that educated me on that. I uh, I found, to be honest with you, I found that they generate blasts of electricity. But you said that's you found that's how to kill them. As well, well, that's what right? it says here because they okay. had a. Uh, here's another report where it was going to a military installation, and the fence right. was electrified. And what they did was they they caught they caught one that was thirty feet long, mm -hmm. and three feet in circumference, and it was trying to climb the fence and it was fried. Now the other way to kill it is by flame. So flame or electricity will kill them. Uh, uh, according to other reports I've had here, and somebody must have done some research on this. Um, if you shoot it or if you chop it up and, and you know, like a regular worm, 
Uh, instead of having one Mongolian death worm, now you got two, three, four, or five, depending That's on how much you've shot it up. Or even if you blow it up, here's a report. They tried to blow it up with dynamite. And what they had was like 50 different little death pieces worm. wiggling around and not dead. So there's a problem there, electricity and flame, and that's about the only way you're going to kill this thing. Huh, wow. I'm, I'm wondering whether if you poured acid on it, if that would help, but this thing spits acid too, and it's venom. For, yeah, corrosive acid. So it's a good question. You know, I, I, what's interesting is I got blast electricity. It, it generates blast electricity. So you said that's how they, they killed this thing. So if you spit if you threw like an acidic substance on it, would that kill it as well? Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. I'm wondering question, whether man. that would burn the skin. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, we should ask Gary about that. Gary, if you threw yeah, acid, on, if you threw an ass acid on a, uh, <laughs> on a pit viper, you think we, it would kill it? Well, <laughs> might make him pretty mad. Make him want to throw some venom. Probably get him pissed at you. Right. Yeah. Damn. I think if I seen one of these things, four feet in diameter and 30 feet long i'd probably call in an a10 or an apache something yeah that's pretty damn big get a spooky gunship on him and have him play do you get anything on the first sighting Nick? i got a thousand years dating a thousand years back to Laura. Yeah. yeah they i don't have an exact date but yeah you're right over over a thousand years has been reported um like i said Genghis khan uh his soldiers his his yep. horse soldiers who were the uh like excellent um, bowmen, they could fire their, you know, their archers can fire arrows while riding a horse. Uh, they they were going up to a, a war zone, going up to meet, you know, whoever they were going up to meet, I think the Chinese at the time. And they stopped and they went back because they saw the sand elevating in the area that they were riding. And they just dead stopped the whole horde, and then they went back. So that's one report that I have here. And this 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 does come from the prime minister's diaries, because evidently he was a historian and he took, uh, you know, stories that were written about the Mongolian death worm. Yeah, I guess it's a big deal over there, you know. It, it sounds like we were saying earlier, it was tough to for Western explorers to get in the country because up until what ninety, Gary, they were controlled by the yeah. Soviets. Yep. And now China. Yeah. But anyway, it's not only seen in Mongolia, I found, but also the Middle Europe. East, Asia, North Africa. So North, pretty, North Africa too. Huh? North Africa wow. as well. So it's more widespread than I had thought originally. You know, I don't know if you guys found the same thing, but that's pretty interesting. You know, no, I didn't, I didn't find that part that it was down North Africa, but yeah, yeah would, well, that would figure. More widespread than I thought, you know. I would. Keep that in mind. Keep that yeah. state in mind being more widespread. Okay. All right. Will do. Uh, habitat, desert, underground, population, if real, small. Um. Evidently, they uh, self-replicate, you know. Uh, yeah, somehow. Like many, that's got me. like many different uh, you know, zoological animals that we know. Right. They... They don't need a male and female to reproduce, so this thing just reproduces on its own. So it's a what is the, what is the term for the scientific term for that? Ase asexual, correct? Yeah. Mm. Well, the way they're talking with this one being segmented and stuff like that, there's actually a term for that. I can't think of. Is it. there? Okay. Centipedes, millipedes are all are all. That they way. do it too. Well, you. I mean it. They cut you break them apart, but the regeneration that I didn't even I guess I was looking at the more biological side of it. I didn't catch uh, some of that. Some of that is getting kind of folklorish, but when uh, you look at this on the biological side of it, I found a lot of more animals over there that could be mistaken for this. Okay, I thought uh, until. Nick threw that uh, 30 feet plus at me. I, there is no animal over there. Well, this is, the, no. this is coming from the Prime Minister of I'm Mongolia's saying. diary, you know, <laughs> dated back in the 19, early 1920s. And he's, he's got quite a few things reported here. Um, let's see. His, he's got another report here, uh, 1927. His uh, army was going out 
into the desert to uh what is this here let's see they were they were acting as an armed escort all right into the desert to another town 100 and some odd miles away when four four of the soldiers on horseback now mind you they were on horseback and they're going over the sand suddenly disappeared into the sand yeah. oh so I guess they were uh, marching into the desert, you know, with their horses, making a lot of vibrations. And yeah. that's what the uh, Mongolian deathworm is sensitive to. Yeah. And this thing just popped up. I mean, according to all records here, they're very dangerous, hard to kill, and they like to eat meat. Well, and so, too, like you said earlier, and it's consistent. I mean, it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not too far fetched either direction until right. the size, but it's everything over there. They take it a lot more serious over there than yeah, sociologically. Well, and you know that's, that's amazing too. I mean, because they are carnivorous, and well, let's look at the anaconda for instance. Uh, they've found uh, anacondas and they've just, they've killed them, and in the Philippines where this one anaconda was found, they cut it open. And inside was a small male human being. Yeah. You know, the and the, the, pythons get that big too, don't yeah. they? Yeah, that's a pretty long snake too. So they're they're carnivorous, you know, they, they don't go out and eat, you know, you know, rabbit food or anything like that. You know, give me a carrot, give me some lettuce and and celery and stuff. Not at all. They're they're gonna eat, you know, live breathing things. Well, for prey, the thing I got for prey was humans and livestock is the main thing. So they must take it pretty seriously in Mongolia. I mean, look at this thing. I, I can't tell because I don't have anything to judge it yeah. against, but that, that looks like it could be a good six inches around. Sure. At least you're, you're, you're real, you're real uh, close on that. That thing close. was feet long and almost eight inches around. How long? 15? Wow. Four feet. Four feet. I mean, look at that thing. That My is, God. That is an eel. That's a regular eel. It is found okay. in the waters of the Gobi Desert. It's found in Mongolia. And the uh -huh. big got me, y'all talking about the electrical shock. What do these things do? Electric eels. Electric mm. eel. Uh, what, I, what I did is I went and did a physical search on, you know, images per sighting and, and everything. There's four. I'll just run this by you right quick. There's four different snakes. Just that eel is one thing that can be misidentified with. Let me pull this next one up is the Euro-Asian pit viper or the gaboon. The Eurasian pit viper? Yeah, they're 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 very common in the uh, Gobi Desert. Or the gavoon? Is that what they call it? Well, in the French they call or the uh, they call And it's a pretty nasty snake too, isn't it? Yeah, just a second. Let me uh, get my head about here. This thing here, it gets 2 to 4 feet long, can be up to 8 inches around. And how come you're not sharing? There we go gets up to sorry six inches around and uh could very huh. easily, very easily if he was puffing and hissing and that is some of the stuff that i got from the, uh, the research was it would make noises too it would hiss at people if it came up to scare and but i, I was thinking that maybe this snake could and then the, the you do know that the eurasian uh cobra even ranges up into there the asian cobra there. i didn't know that yeah. so there could be your huh. your your uh Spitty. But one thing that I wanted to bring in, part of this area in the Gobi Desert was part of the old silk trade roads. So, oh. uh, you know, Nick, as you know, uh, yeah. the, the culture coming across could have, uh, how would we say, blended the story a little bit. I guess it's sure. better to say because if you had people from, you know, the Muslim countries coming in, and it, it, it was funny, uh, we had better trade with. Asia then than we do now, but uh, right. uh, and then one more thing on the range on this thing, if uh, we did have that silk trade, if somehow maybe one of them took him as a pet, I, I had to you know laugh at you just talking about <laughs> the movie, you know. But if they did have that silk trade, bringing look at what uh, uh the but I can't even think of his name, uh, Alexander the Great, he yeah. turned from all the way across all those. I mean, all yeah, even the Mongolia. Uh, you, you wonder what could be brought across. You know, people to this day 
have uh, snakes. I mean, look, look when you go when you go over to Asia, they have the uh, the cobras in the jars and everything, and they have them in, in in India and everything. And you know, like like I I was talking about on this one show when I was talking about the Jersey Devil, uh, people were asking, you know, and I told them I said it's a uh, I found it to be a horse bat. And yeah. they're like, well, how could it be there? Aren't horse bats indigenous to Africa? I said, well, you know, look at the time we're talking about, the 1700s. You had royalty uh, settling over here in the United States, and they brought tigers. You know, they brought lions over here. They brought all kinds of exotic birds and animals. I mean, people just did freaky things like that. And... Yeah. They would either escape or they would let them get away. I mean, Black Panthers, they're not indigenous to the United States yet. We have them. They've been seen here. Uh, they did bring them over here, period, plain and simple. Same thing in, in uh, Great Britain. They they brought Black Panthers over there. Uh, they, they brought apes over there. So what's to say that they didn't, you know, escape and reproduce? And that's why they see them to, to this day. Yep. Yeah, look at the problem. Sorry, pardon my language, but look at the problem uh, we've got with snakes in Florida, the, the Everglades, you know, and that's Un from domesticated reptiles being prime, prime example. Yeah. Right. And the other big boy yeah. outside of the anaconda. Right. It's the African rock right. python. And oh, yeah. Python exactly. Are the two biggest ones, and they're all over Florida. Look at yep. the North American saltwater croc. They wasn't. They Absolutely. America brought them over. The razorback boar, they brought them over. I mean, yeah. Well, Right. People bring stuff over whether you whether it's legal or not. And back in the seventeen hundreds, hell yeah. <laughs> you had the money to do it, they shipped them over. Yeah. You know, and really I I was I haven't done a full research on it, but from what I did, we have a lot of stuff over here from, from Africa that shouldn't be here. Uh we've we've got a lot of things from European areas that you know are not indigenous here, you know, different types of birds. They're 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 here, but uh, yeah. before we get off snakes, uh, Gary, uh, I understand you disrespected a uh, a cobra one time, and he did something to you. <laughs> oh yeah, I, he spit at you, didn't he? Yeah, he spit at me. <laughs> I didn't disrespect him. I think I stepped about two foot too close to him. <laughs> he thinks you're his. And folks, I don't care what anybody says. I've had rattlesnakes come back on me. I've had copperheads. But there ain't nothing as scary as, and I've been bit by both. There ain't nothing as scary when a cobra fans back on. That, that's no, just, God. Uh, he flares his uh, head up at they, you, and, or his collar, rather. <laughs> but, you know, that is a, a real good, you know, factor if uh, that we were talking about before the show, which leads us right into the, the sixth part of this. Uh, we are talking about just before the show of the, the nomadic peoples there and the history in the past and their – if they did see something out of the ordinary, they would make a big deal of it. And the nomadic peoples, that's how they communicated with other peoples. They tell stories. What gets me is I went that route. Y'all went the more mainstream route, and most of y'all's information is coming from government officials. So here's my question. If we're getting this much information out of government officials, how many more reports over there because it is locked down that we're missing? Exactly. One thing a that lot. came up in... I wanted to check, you know, I was just going through anything biological. I know uh, uh, Nick kind of likes to poke fun about, be, about being radioactive and all that. But did you know that China is actually half of the Gobi Desert now? It, it's <laughs> called uh, Lup, Lupnur, L-O-P-N-U-R. So Lupnur, uh, nuclear test base. <laughs> yep. Go figure, Soviet assistance in the selection of the site because they're both working sure. to it. Uh, 1967 to still ongoing uh last the uh, sorry last time they actually caught it on camera was july 29th of 1996 they had a nuclear blast mm. that's pretty recent in all reality i mean it is you know from the 60s all the way up yeah i mean yeah. it's 27 years 96 to now and that can Damn. bring up now that would add a, if we added in the you know like everybody talks about chernobyl and the yeah, any kind of mutagen, mutagen, but mutation, uh, that would make the size go through the roof. Yeah, sure. I mean, and, and it would really piss off the Mongolian death room because they like that vibration. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine thing popping its head up, saying, yeah. "Okay, where's what am I going to eat? Nope, nothing out here." 
and then suddenly the radiation hits it and and it might mutate it and now we have a uh, Mongolian death worm that's maybe instead of being five or six feet in circumference, it's now 40 feet in circumference and 300 feet long. And Another thing that I was looking into that about was the, the illumination. And I know we haven't got into that, but mm. you know how y'all talk about, and, and Nick, I'll let you bring it up. Then I'll bring my deal in on, on the, uh, uh, some of the reports you was telling us about. Well, I have another report here that the uh, prime minister wrote uh, this family that, and you mentioned this Gary uh, about the, the silk trade route. Yeah. All right. Um, this caravan, uh, six wagons uh, with horses, one horse, each wagon. And then it had six riders, uh, three families and they had their wares with them, you know, the gunpowder and stuff like that, and silk, salt, and, and the like. And they were traveling just before nighttime. They were looking for a place to, to set up before set up camp before nighttime. And a Mongo a death worm came right out in front of them. The the lead horse panicked and ran off to the north. And what the death worm did, it came and it grabbed the next horse in line and dragged it under. And what happened was there was one man at the reins of this horse. So the horse, the man, and the wagon went under. And that's oh. how large this thing was. So that's wow. that's another one that was reported to the Mongolian prime minister. I mean, evidently, he kept, kept the diary of all these different things that happened. You know, that was reported say? to him. They yeah. they made a complaint. That's what this is put down as. This is put down as a complaint to the prime minister. And his his response he puts down, his basic response in, in English, I have to translate it to English here, uh, basically was, what do you want me to do about it? Right. <laughs> this thing's too big. I send my yeah. army out there. It's going to eat the army. How would you hunt something like that? I mean, <laughs> We have to go get some of the actors from the movie Dune to show us how to hunt one. You got to go out there and you got to, you know, get a lot of people banging on the ground, you know, with, with stuff and trumpets and all that. And get a line dancer. Going. Yeah, because it's, and, and then whoever is unlucky enough when it comes up to the surface, you're suddenly you're eaten. You know, it's not, uh, nah. Nowadays, I think it would be easier to fight it. We could get flamethrowers. Looks too much like a snake. Call in. I mean, the heck with the heck with bear spray for me. I mean, I'm gonna get a couple. <laughs> I'm gonna get two tanks, two flamethrowers, one in my holster and one in my hand, and that's it. You know, you come up, I'm gonna fried frizzle or fricassee, and I'm not even gonna use olive oil on you, Jack, because you know, this sucker. I mean, it's got a mouth, no eyes, teeth all around the mouth. You know, bite. You know, it's. That's all it wants to do is eat. If if these was new reports, I would say that this was influenced by a science fiction movie or any of them, any of the science fiction movies. But these reports are from before TV in the yeah. 1800s, 1800s. And yeah. the right. consistency throughout it is is just crazy. It's like, you know, even in the in the Bigfoot world, you know, we have such a wide variances of reports. But compared to the number of reports, it's all over the place. Right. Well, with this thing, every report that we pulled up, they've been consistent, you know, and it's not something that you could biologically mix up with something. You know, I, I understand if a cobra jumped up and spit at you, he'd look, I believe me, I know they look like they're 12 feet long. But I don't think that this many people over this amount of time would all just be telling inherent random stories and somebody put them together. There's got to be something behind this. I agree. Well, the one with the caravan, this was a complaint. Yeah. You know, he had he had quite a few people there from the caravan, and they were complaining, and and they, they wanted to know, what are you going to do about it? You know, we, we're, we're bringing wealth to the city. We're paying taxes. I mean, he went on. Well, let me see. One, six, he's got six pages worth on this thing, and it's not all about the death worm. It's about their complaint and how... They got to uh, watch out for robbers, how they're paying taxes, you that know, when they're traveling the trade route. 
and and now they got this 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 monster eating up you know one of their wagons full uh, this isn't just some bullshit story these people no, threw out there it's involved a- with like you said gary Involved about with the complaint in general, yeah, the world was just thrown in I there. Love it. The I do too. There was no television back when these people were right. complaining about this. You know, I mean, and and if there was television, this is a barren land. I doubt if they many of these people have television today. No, no, you know? no way. But I just I think it's so cool that that like me and Jeremiah was saying is like they're putting this in legitimately. If somebody was on right. fabricate a story, they wouldn't be going to that link. You know? Exactly. They're putting it in a freaking report that just gives right. me more legitimacy that you know and and kind of knowing that culture over there, they are a lot more serious about this than we sure. are. Sure. But uh, especially I mean, like Nick, you were saying this the, the death worm was thrown into that report. The report wasn't thrown into the death yeah. worm report. You know what right. I mean? I mean, these people were viably complaining that we pay taxes. We right. give, when we came into the city, we had to pay you taxes because we made X amount of dollars for where our trade with China and we're bringing back wares. We're bringing back gold and, and here one of our wagons I th- I'm trying to see where I wrote down about how much was lost in that one wagon. They, they made a claim. But like I said, the uh, the prime minister at the time, this is a different prime minister, uh, and the prime minister from not, from the not early 1920s is writing this. Yeah. He's transcribing this from another book because he didn't want to lose it, saying that the pages were old and they were you know disintegrating. And and he's translating this from another prime minister's diaries. And they were it was a complaint, like you said, Jay. It was a complaint. We want protection. Yeah, from yeah. robbers we want protection from monsters we want... <laughs> and we're we're paying you money and we're getting eaten alive and evidently i don't i don't see it here i must have it upstairs in my other book because i was really getting into this story i'm telling you I, I love this new app i have because i can get into stuff all over the world now um <laughs> these these people evidently lost one quarter of the wealth that they were bringing back just from that front wagon, you know, that oh, got wow. eaten. Well, it was the second wagon in line because the first wagon, the horse got spooked and took off. The second wagon got eaten along with the driver and, you know, the horse and, and the wagon and whatever gold they had in there. <laughs> so, I mean, these poor people, they're saying, hey, hey, where's our protection? And he's going, oh, nothing I can do about it. I mean, sorry. Right. You know, get yourselves a dragon or something to protect you next time, because <laughs> we're, oh we're not doing nothing. So, so what else you got, Gary? And give us some uh, family stories about oh, how you had know, pet man. death worms in your backyard. Those, those <laughs> Come on, I've your great grandfather, your great grandfather used to have them and <laughs> used to ride them right around on him like a horse. Yeah, <laughs> slinging a sword over his head. Get along, little doggy. You know, it's like. I, just, yeah. I think it's funny that we're doing this right before the premiere of the new Dune here. Are you joking? <laughs> in a few there, months, yeah. there is a new Dune coming out? Yeah. In yes. <laughs> is that the same? I I thought you were kidding. I didn't I didn't know that was oh, coming okay. out. They've got the uh, folks. This is very relevant because this is you can watch that movie and it'll teach you how to survive a, a Mongolian death worm. No. <laughs> uh, the original Dune came out with Sting and them, and and uh, our, uh, who played a uh, Professor X, uh, Patrick Stewart. Uh, yeah, like eighty four. Well, they yeah. made a new one that's that follows a story they released the first uh first episode of it or the first one uh in 2021 and then the second part of that one is coming up now i don't know if you've seen the original dune it's like four hours long three four hours long it's long yeah yeah i don't watch a lot of tell but um, honest to god folks honest to god when i announced we were doing a mongolian death worm last week i knew nothing about this new dune movie uh i really i don't think i ever really watched it i I don't really watch a lot of television i do a lot of reading the first one i do a lot of reading i do a lot of research on the computer but a lot of book reading and newspaper reading and stuff and i didn't know this doing thing but uh, let me ask you something guys can anybody answer this what's the difference between the movie tremors 
in the movie Dune. I like you, like you, I really, there's about six parts of the Tremor series. Really? Um, it's yeah. a movie or a television series? It's a, it's movie, but there's, they're, they've done six sequels to this oh my movie so far. God. It's almost it, yeah. like Fast and Furious. Oh, right. Jesus. It's exactly. like Shark, it's freaking like Sharknado. Yeah, I never thought, much. I never thought you would have a Sharknado one, two, three, four. It's up to Sharknado seven now. I mean, come on yeah, now. If they were to make another Tremors movie, it'd be on episode. It'd be on number seven. Oh my god! I, well, what is it? It's a it's a worm. Well, no. See, that's what's funny. In the last one, they they even exploit this thing even more. They make it the babies fly. Oh no! So they've gone a little. They've gone a little overboard on this thing in the Tremors. Oh jeez. Are, do they take place in different places in the of the world or I can't remember I think on a whole different planet. <laughs> Dune's not even Earth. Dune Dune, is- yeah, the Dune movies aren't even on Earth, but the Tremor oh. movies are one they, they Africa they were they were in Africa for the last one and the, the original ones were in the US southwest area. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so realistically, if uh we was traveling through the Gobi Desert, say in the nineteen twenties to I did not hardly see any reports after, say, 60, 70. You know, I didn't see nothing. Right. You, Nick? Well, after all these damn nuclear explosions that China's <laughs> playing well, around and Russia probably threw a couple of nukes there, too. I mean, I, I would think everything was seen. glass. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what I was getting at is, you know, if you're a traveling uh, merchant or something and something jumps up, there could be a it could have been a snake or a cobra or something like that. But uh, like I said, I could understand that at seven to four, you know, seven to four to, sorry, two to seven foot. Two but when seven, you're talking yeah. 50 foot, 30 foot around, that just totally blew off. It, it Folks, it threw me because I had this whole thing planned out. Me and Nick, I was going to come at him with a bunch of biological stuff. And then he throws that Man. in. Like you just threw the, <laughs> he threw the monkey wrench in my <laughs> gears over here. It just took me back. You know, I was wondering why this thing was glowing. It says made in Mongolia. <laughs> back here. <laughs> Holy crap. You know, it it could possibly be from that damn area where they they lit it up with freaking nuclear bombs. Oh, this is unbelievable, guys. Well, I, I don't Nick, understand this thing. Nick must be going to work tonight. He's got his uniform on. Yeah, he's going to work. Oh, we lost him. No, I'm here. Yeah. Oh. Help me out with the translation here. It translate. You know what it translates into is intest, in, intestine, intestine worm. Yeah. And it's old guy Corfe something. I have to right? read it. Yeah, it translates into intestine worms because of the blood like color and the size. It's as big as an intestine. Yeah. This thing it glows. Well, that, yeah, apparently see, that the intestine that, glows as well. That's one thing that Nick was, you know, we didn't get into it. That some of these, there was a story I was reading in, uh, of course, this was 1900s, but a, a caravan was coming across there, and it looked like a glowing field of poppies, the way the, the guy said okay. it, probably from Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And it was supposedly Mongolian death worms coming up, and they was like glowing, some of them glowing red and some of them glowing white. Yes. And that's the reason I was thinking of Nick when he, when he brought that up. But uh, if they was very translucent, I could see light reflecting off of them. But uh, there's not no natural animal out there in the desert right now that's glowing. Well, it might be after it walks around on that radiated sand. <laughs> yeah. Caution. Possible radiation yep, damage. Could. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. Woof. The, this is... Uh, I tell you how interesting this is, and I have to be very careful how much I say because it's like being licensed and going to release under PBS. But a, uh, a mentor of mine and very famous videographer that's also in the Bigfoot community somewhat went to Mongolia not long ago and was doing a documentary on this. So there's got to be some legitimacy to it. You've on the death worm, really? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. It's going to be on PBS, and I, that's that's what gets me is you know us dealing with cryptids. We we know the mainstream cryptids, Bigfoot, you know, 
uh, Loch Ness Monster and all that, but there's a lot of others, and that's where this station, where we're going to do with this series is we're going to put all these things out. Yeah. I've got an idea for a show. I've got to run by these guys, but we'll just do it right now. And then we do like a revamp to it of like do a show of like the four rarest cryptids or whatever. But folks, there's a lot of cryptids out there. That oh, God, that yeah. We haven't, Hundreds. What we want to do is do this show and do the research on it. And uh, we, we haven't even got into the real deep folklore side of it. We're just concentrating on the main ones that's got legitimate. Well, you don't get no more. Legit, well, I mean. Enough information yeah. to, to bring it out to everybody. That's what, what we're trying yeah. to do with the cryptid consortium. I mean, because. Like, you don't see them every day. I can go on Facebook and you're going to see Sasquatch, Bigfoot, same name, Dog same man. thing, Dogman. Uh, then then you're going to see a little bit little bit more on Mothman. And, you know, that's basically it. You know, but what we did last week, the Ozark Howler, it's not really spoken about very much. Yeah. Mongolian Deathworm, no. And next week, should I give them a preview? Go ahead. Next Thank next you. week we're gonna do. I know it's not a cryptid, but it has to do with the cryptid community and and UFOs. Men in Black. Yeah, we're gonna do. Yeah, I've got a lot of Sasquatch reports involved. We're gonna do Me MIBs. Too, Me too. MIBs, guys, because yeah. I know I know a lot of researchers, dogman researchers, that have been. I might as well call it harassed exactly. by the MIBs. Yep. A lot of dogman researchers. Um, you got a lot of the people in the UFO yeah, community that have been harassed by um, MIBs. Shit, the, the three of us have interviewed how many people in the last two years that have been harassed by some sort of agency or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Opened up a can. I mean, I'm talking oh, people. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm, I've taken reports from and I've spoken to people face to face. Mm hmm. And they have been harassed by MIBs. Yep. And I mean, I've got my own thoughts on who they are, but I want to bring it out. I mean, a lot of people in the UFO community, like I said, were really harassed. There was Very. one guy, there was one guy back, I get, well, I got to get the, my dates correct, but I'm thinking of the 60s. And he started a UFO magazine, but he was so much harassed by them that he stopped. I mean, yeah. really big time. And this guy doesn't, I mean, I'm just going to give you a sneak preview into next week, what we're going to talk about, but this guy was harassed so bad that he actually suspected that they may be aliens. You know, that, my, I I, now, but, my, yeah, yeah, I know my idea is it, of who they are is something else, but maybe they're both a mixture of both. I don't know, but they wanted to stop him because he had some good solid evidence at the time but that'll be for next week so men in black is uh next week's topic that's opening up a can of mongolian death worms hell yeah <laughs> absolutely that men in black things uh, uh especially for guys like me and you with, with our background we got to be careful <laughs> oh man yeah. our opinions aren't too bad but yeah it's... i don't know i think my ndas only are for 25 years and i got most of them are up <laughs> So, you know, when you sign an NDA, an NDA says right on there. 25 years. It's 25 years. 25. Some of mine was like 15. So yeah. All of mine are free. Let's see. Two, yeah, all of mine are out there. <laughs> we got to make sure. But there's so, going to be things that we won't talk about. Yeah. So, Jay, uh, Gary, you got anything else on our, our friend, the Mongolian death worm? No, I, I we covered most of it, man. Um it's just there's got to be something more to it. it there's got to be there's got to be credibility behind it. Yeah. Is my opinion. I, my just, final my final thoughts on the I'm matter. Curious. It's got to be something legitimate. I'm I'm real curious, folks. If y'all have any more information that we yeah. haven't covered on the Mongolian death worm, be sure and send it in, and we'll get you on the uh, get you on the show talking about it because absolutely this is kind of going to be. But I, I am real curious about the the lack of thereof reports after the whole China thing kind of took over. I'm going to have to do a little bit more digging because I didn't come across it. And that's interesting. I, I don't know. I think with the uh, with China exploding all those nuclear you know, warheads over there, that they, they could have killed them off. <laughs> they it's could have killed them off. I yeah, say, could that be a purpose of them dumping all the nukes? I'm just, just saying, men in black next week, you know, we got people jumping... 
Yeah. <laughs> people not people knocking on the door. Uh, don't you be talking about us now? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. What, we'll see what it brings. <laughs> I'll just tell him. But Gary said, you know. <laughs> found it on the internet it's got to be true <laughs> yeah hey, absolutely i'm just going to be looking for uh for black chevy suburbans yep. you know with dark windows outside yeah i live on a dead end street they, they oh i'm sorry pinky's up they like to call it a cul-de-sac cul-de-sac yeah, yeah i live in a cul-de-sac so you come in my street <laughs> you're going to be I'm caught in an l ambush i'm going to tell you right now <laughs> I, I've missed them days of living on a road like that. If you see somebody turn the, turn off the road a mile up, you know, they're coming to see you or they're lost, you know. Yeah, you don't belong here, Jack. I'm sorry. And unless you're the mailman or Amazon, mm -mm. I've missed them days. Amazon doesn't even like to come down the street. So, hell, we got to take the garbage cans all the way to the other end of the block, you know, because the garbage man won't come down. A little, little dangerous, I guess. <laughs> Then I got this friggin' park out here. It's a state park, and you know, I I got a sneaky suspicion that we do have a dog man out there, and and possibly a small population of Sasquatch. I mean, I, I went out there with a couple of guys one time just to check out a possible dog man sighting, and <laughs> just as we step foot into the park, I hear a crack, and a tree collapses. Oh boy! <laughs> I was like. Come on. Well, I mean, it, it waited till we came here for a, I think it was about a good 18 inches around the tree to just fall. And it was a good 30 feet high. Right. Why would this healthy tree just, just you know, over. collapse all right. of a sudden? Yeah. And um, it was also close to the area. Well, 900 feet from where I live uh, was the lady who reported to me at, 6 35 in the morning of a sighting of something bipedal that looked like a wolf all the way in the back of her backyard which coincidentally butted up against the back of this park right and i'm like what the heck is something like that doing here gary did we lose you god with all the cameras he has in that studio you of his I, come in yeah you know, we think one of or one or two of the cameras would be getting him. <laughs> Either that or that snake that he had in his house that got loose and he's running. You know, he may be, yeah, he might be a former uh, snake eater ranger, but you know, I don't think he likes snakes anymore. Me neither. I mean, he shouldn't have disrespected that cobra, that king cobra. <laughs> Talking shit about his mama, you know, and the thing spit at him. I wonder if Cobra Venom has uh, what does it have? It doesn't have acid in it, it's but I think a it, neuro, it, a neurotoxin that freezes yeah. you. I think so. Man, and those guys like to mess with those things too in India. You know, they they got them yeah. in those jars that are covered. But you know, I, I read something about that because I was very curious uh, about that, Jay. Yeah. The snake. <laughs> check this out. The snakes that they deal with are kind of defanged they depoison ah, them wow. or something you know it's okay. it's like taking the front claws off your your cat like cat yeah yeah you know, so i think that's and that's why they deal with them so so easily sure. because i don't care i mean these things bite you so many times you know sooner or later it's going to travel to your heart yeah without a doubt yeah. i don't believe they build up enough immunity to you know i don't either no, I mean, that, that, that no really way. looks odd to me, you know, that, that they're over there playing their pipes and their little flutes and stuff. And this thing's coming up and, and it gets I, pissed at them and pss, bites. I think you're, yeah. you're right about them defanging them because there's no way they'd crawl down in a pit of, of fanged cobras. But you do know that the fangs will grow back eventually. But uh, I would uh, I would not want. To. Well, supposedly they take. First of all, they get grandfather snakes. I don't know how they can tell that they're really old, but maybe they pass them on from, you know, generation to generation. I don't know. But from what I read is that they do that. They, before they come out into the streets to make their money, you know, by playing with the snakes, they go to a clinic and they, you know, de-juice them. Yeah. And 
or devenomize them so that they get them all dry. And, and they're also something, they, they do something to them to close them up. But still, if the, if the snake bites you, it's going to bite you and it's going to hurt, you know, hurt your skin. So you're standing there with this cobra hanging off your arm. It's in your arm and you're going, Oh, donate to my, to my hat here. <laughs> give me, give me money. Give me money. You know, and you know, see, I let them bite him for you. And, uh, you know, I guess that's a way to make a living. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but hey. I didn't know it was going to get dinner and a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh-uh. I mean, it's not like what Gary does for shits and giggles. Even he lets boars and chase them around in the woods. Not no more. I'm too crippled up. I used to. Well, you used to. You say, here, little guy, here, little guy. And they'd be running at him. And he'd be running away, skate, Freddy Skater, Scaredy Freddy, or whatever you call it. And we're, uh, anymore, so you don't get we, uh, call them up and, and drop them with a, with a rifle. <laughs> I'm too lazy to do that. Gary, I wanted to ask you last week. I forgot about it. But from those boar, the wild boar that you have out there in, in, in Oki, uh, Oakland, do, can you make bacon out of those things? Yeah. You make anything you make with a regular hog. Real bacon? Yeah. Oh, man. Damn. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. bacon. Oh, man. The, oh. Big, the biggest thing with a, with a wild pig, you want to get a female. If it's a male, you don't want to try to butcher him if he's over you know 100 150 pounds because he's gonna get too musky but in oh. the other female you can go up four or five hundred pounds and you can do them just like you do a regular pig i smoke okay bacon. i've done smoked bacon i've done we've made uh all kinds of you know everything you can make with a regular pig you can do with it you could do with that pork chops and all i mean yeah, yeah. it's it's i mean it's like comparing a say a hereford cow to a to a whole thing you know whole like, thing yeah they're they're a little bit physically different you know but yeah and the pork chops you get you know i was at a uh, place in asbury park i went to eat at a uh, cuban restaurant it was called hmm, the cubicon and i i ordered their pork chops and then they gave me a side of these this this oh god i think it was corn and peppers uh stuff i mean it was really great everything was great but I got, I got porkzilla. The thing was no joke. It was. Let me see. Yep, it was over three inches thick, and it was this big. I mean, this thing was gigantic, guys. I ate every bit of it. Every bit of it. So it was wonderful. Like, you said you was like a Mongolian death worm up there eating it. <laughs> oh man, either you eat it or it'll eat you. You know so. But my God, this place was great. I, I, I got to go check it out because I haven't been there since the COVID. But uh, Asbury Park, right on the boardwalk, the, the Kubicon, it's got some great restaurants in that area. So if anybody's in New Jersey, you want to go to Asbury. And, uh, and also Red Bank. Red Bank's got some great restaurants. I mean, I don't eat cheap. I don't, don't like to go cheap. I, I don't go to McDonald's or... Burger slime or anything like that. That just gets me <laughs> sick. I want to eat whole solid pieces of meat. You know, unless it's a good burger that I that I know where the meat came from. Right. But I, I gotta come back out there and uh because I know when we were in Arkansas, the team uh we heard, but we didn't see any wild boar, but you do have boar up there. And um we, we didn't have any problems with them, but we did we did put out a lot of uh trip wires and stuff to scare everything away <laughs> we didn't want to have to have any have to play with anything while we're trying to sleep it's funny you're talking about a friend of mine's went camping last weekend it's getting hot down here already so they're sleeping in a hammock mm -hmm. and uh, he woke up and he says he knew they wasn't there the night before he woke up and there's a bunch of boar tracks underneath his hammock oh he's geez. sleeping during the night and he said I, I got up and got out of it i was like yeah <laughs> i that'd be talking about a Rotisserie. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Uh uh, ain't happening. I, that's the reason I have a hard time sleeping in. You know, when, when we go, we do shifts. I, I don't know how people can just go out and camp and <laughs> and not have a guard. If, if if nobody else is on a pool of shift, I'm at least staying up until somebody wakes up. You know. Well, I was out there with seven. You know, a team of seven, two guys. We don't do one, two. One checking 180 that way, one checking 180 that way. 
four hour shifts, switch them around. We try to. You know, I'm not going to yeah. I'm not going to have stuff sneak up on us and and do do damage. Uh uh-uh. uh. And everybody slept with their firearms. But anyway, uh, I guess it's uh, time to go. We, we ran out of our hours worth of uh, filming time. And uh, folks, we'll see you next week with the uh, MIBs. That should be a good one. Jay, good night, Gary, I'm going to say good night to you guys. And good night, good everybody night, out there. Talk to you later. God bless.